Hello, all my Homestead Roadies. This is Homestead Road Podcast, and I'm your host, Thomas Wallach. And today we have with us David O'Neill and Steve Wilson. This is a podcast where we discuss selling your home as is, real estate, and anything else that relates to it. So basically, everything. Homestead Road wants you to feel the joy of selling your house as is. So David, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I am a longtime realtor, property investor. Um, I am the director of acquisitions for Homestead Road, so I manage the uh, basically all the purchases that we do here at Homestead Road. So this year we're going to do about 250 houses that we're going to purchase. So that's my department. That's the, the group I manage. Awesome. Also, we have with us Steve. I'm Steve. I'm an acquisition manager under David, and uh, can't wait to get started. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Awesome. Well, David, you guys are here with us to talk about different ways to sell your home. So why don't you tell us what works? Yeah, so um, when you go to sell your house, there's obviously everybody knows you can hire a realtor, you can sell to an investor, there's, you know, there's a variety of different ways you can go. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is a little bit of if you're going to sell to an investor, for example, uh, what does that look like? Who, who, you know, who are the different investors and, and how do they operate and what you should maybe pay attention to if you're going that route of selling to an investor. All right, cool. Sounds very interesting. So, for example, everybody's probably seen the sign on the side of the road that says, you know, we'll pay cash for your house, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I see them on every time I get off <laughs> on an exit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're always like these little yeah, yellow little signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they're, they're that one. And so, there's a lot of those. Um, there's uh, That could be a wide variety of different people that have done it. A lot of times, those are um, smaller investors, you know, that are kind of getting started or they may buy a couple houses a year, that kind of thing. Um, as they get larger, then they'll start sending you postcards. And everybody's seen these postcards. If you if you go in your house a long period yeah, of time, yeah, yeah. you tend to see postcards. And and then, um, so for us, well, we're we're the largest uh, in the Twin Cities for selling your house as is. Mm-hmm. Um, we buy more houses than anybody else in our market in the last twelve months for sure. Yeah. Um, and so so there's different ways you can go about it. And so within these cash buyers. Um, which are out there, there's, there's different people that, that operate in there. So sometimes they're just like little one-time investors that are going to buy, maybe hold it as a rental. Sometimes they're going to resell it. Um, and then there's, there's people called wholesalers. And wholesalers are really the largest group uh, that you'll find. So That's interesting. So I always thought it was just an investment group that's out there. Yeah. You know, like everyone's the same, basically. Yeah. We can come out and... You know, any of these houses will buy for cash, and you know that's just it. But yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, we track them all because we're 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 a bigger company. There's almost 40 of us here, um, so you know we're a big company, and so we um, and we buy again. We buy the most houses of anybody, so um, so we're keeping a, keeping an eye on what everybody else is doing. So we look at like how many houses were bought in for, by an investor over the last uh-huh. year, and so for the we track anybody that buys more than like three houses a year for example, right? Great. And so it's easy, it's just tax records, you just look at who bought what and what they did with the property. Sure. And uh, so we have on our list probably 40 different groups, like LLCs, that have purchased these properties. Right. So there's a lot, yeah. you know, there's a lot of different people, but a lot of them are buying, you know, 10 houses or less is a big chunk. Um, when you start getting in, you start getting into more legitimate companies when they're buying 40 or 50 a year. Right. Um, right. You know, then it starts to become, maybe there's more than one individual in there. And then as you get larger, um, you know, the, 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 I think around 80 is where most people cap out, you know, a couple of, pro- a couple of groups out there, but sell about 80 a year, uh-huh. uh, or buy about 80 a year. Um, so anyway, so those are, so that, that's what our market looks like, um, for the, for these cash buyers. And, and so what about Homestead Road? As far so as Homestead as Road, we out. buy, um, we're, this year, I think we're going to hit about 250 houses. So right. we're, right. we're big. So, so we're going to be big, somewhere right? between 215 and 250. So. A lot bigger, but we're a lot much larger company. We're more established. You can look at us online. It's my yeah. little commercial for Homestead Road here. Right. Feel <laughs> uh, the joy. Yeah. Feel the joy. <laughs> uh, but you do need to go look online, and you can look through reviews and things. And you, you know, you just see like the volume start to start to change. Sure. And uh, so, so that's where we come in. So we are an actual purchaser. We're an end unit purchaser. So we will, if, if we come in and make an offer on your house, we're actually the person that's going to purchase the house. Mm-hmm. And then for us, we're going to probably renovate it, um, look for opportunities to increase the value. And then our business model is to resell it to, to the next family that's going to move in there. Awesome. So a lot of the properties we pick up are, they're a wide variety. There's a lot of reasons why people, you know, we're, we're providing a service for simplicity and, and just the, the ease and, and uh, the feel the joy process, which, you know, if you read our reviews, you kind of see what that actually start, it starts to take shape what right. that looks like sure. um 
but when we're when we're but we're an actual buyer so a lot of the investors in the market one of the first ways property investors get into the market if they're putting those signs up is they're actually a wholesaler mm -hmm. which means they likely don't have the funds to actually purchase the house um, so what they're going to do is they're going to write a contract on the house like they're going to purchase the house and then put an inspection period in there and then what they're going to they're kind of speculating they can sell it for more money to somebody else mm -hmm. that will actually close on it mm -hmm. so a lot of times on these purchase agreements they'll say at the top it'll say um that person that company name or that person's name and then at, or assigns you know so they're basically they yeah. can assign that contract to the next group uh that will then be able to purchase the house yeah. so that's the person with funds so sometimes those that group will call us sometimes and yeah. see if we're interested um that kind of thing so we get a lot of emails and we have different wholesalers out there that that do try to sell to us and we buy one once in a while if they so if the situation is right so david why would somebody want to go the wholesaler route well, I don't know exactly. And if it were me, I would. I, I guess would, I should say, do they even know that there's a difference? A lot there? of times, no. And right. so that's probably one of the biggest things to look at is make sure you understand what you're doing. Um, so wholesalers, they're gonna generally they're gonna put you into a longer inspection period, sure. right? That's kind of that's the game. Is you 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 put a contract on a house, and a lot. Of, I mean, there's good people out there. Sometimes they're very upfront, but then sometimes there's wholesalers that aren't telling people what they're doing, mm -hmm. and so they're putting this out, and then they have this long email distribution list. They're gonna send it to everybody, and I'm on a few of those, and uh, so. I I see a lot of these properties come sure, through sure um and then during that inspection period which is anywhere from 10 to 15 days usually sometimes it's 30 days sometimes it just doesn't expire until the house actually closes so it might be a 30-day close mm -hmm. but the inspection period runs the whole distance of that yeah. mm -hmm. so they can always back out of that deal or adjust the price and so then they're gonna they're gonna find people they're gonna send all these pictures out to people and then set up showings to come through the house so they're actually gonna they'll sometimes they'll say it's an inspection on the ones that aren't very open and honest the ones that are will say hey we're gonna have a bunch of people come through kind of like an open house mm -hmm. and they'll book an open house to have all these people come through the house take a look at it and see if they can find somebody that's willing to pay them uh, basically the difference from what you were gonna say you're gonna sell their house to, to somebody for 150,000 they're gonna see if they can sell to somebody else for 170 yeah. um, but they don't have any costs because they never all they're doing is marketing it right and so then they'll take the difference between the two and that's their profit so what do we give more in homestead road than wholesalers or anyone else selling out here um so like the biggest difference is that it, it's with a wholesaler you do have to be careful because if they can't find they're speculating so if they can't find it they're unlikely to find the right buyer they're unlikely to be able to actually purchase it oh. um so then they either have to cancel the contract or say they get somebody that comes in and says like like i've done this to a wholesalers where they'll send me an email and i'll send them one back and say hey i will buy for one hundred fifty thousand. well they had a set for 150,000. Mm -hmm. So they're like, there's no money to be made. They'd make no money. Or I might say, I can buy it for 147,000. Now they're losing $3,000. Yeah. So what they're going to do is go back to the homeowner and say, Hey, we can only pay you $140,000 to make this deal happen. And then right. we can close. Right. And so it's, it's a way to kind of reduce that price if necessary. Sure. And so that's basically what a wholesale, that's how they operate. That's, that's the game. And that's the way a lot of investors kind of get into the market mm -hmm. because get coming in, you know, if you're not a larger company like us, more established and, and have the funding necessary to be able to do this, yeah. you might come in without a whole lot of funding. And okay. so it's a way to get started. And so you do see that, but as a homeowner, you want to be careful of that because you might end up in the wrong spot. Huh. You know, you might think you have a deal and you don't really have a deal. Yeah. And so, um, so if you, so if you are thinking about selling to one of the signs on the side of the road or a commercial or postcard, whatever that is, um, one of the things you want to do is ask them, are you wholesaling? Are you the actual buyer? Are you guaranteeing? Are you actually buying this home? Yeah. Um, you want to dig into it. You want to yeah, dig into it. And when they put the purchase that. agreement in front of you, it should be a Minnesota standard purchase agreement. It should right. be the same one. You can look at look it up. The Minnesota Bar Association writes these. Yeah. Um, they, should, they should be a realtor. They're not a realtor. That's okay. But they should actually... Um, be using the state of Minnesota documents mm -hmm. and at the top when you on the main purchase agreement page It will say who's buying the property. Yeah. and so a lot of times if it's a if it's an investor They're gonna buy it in some sort of entity mm -hmm. um, And so it's gonna say like Homestead Road across the top or it will say, you know, whatever this entity might be um, but you what you want to do is make sure that you it doesn't say that or 
if they assign. Yeah. Uh, that's right. where that's how you'll yeah. know right away. Yeah. And so that's what you want to look out for. If you're looking at buying and, and it's a wholesale or selling and it's a wholesaler. Sure, sure. I know that outside of wholesalers, there's also eye buyers. Can you go and do a little bit uh, of detail on that? Yeah. So the eye buyers just came out. So they're they're kind of um, they're basically usually they're tech companies. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why they're called like an eye buyer, it's like an internet buyer. That's what that's kind of the term that everybody's using. So we have a couple that have just done. A, they're doing a ton of commercials in our in our area, um, and they have different places they're going. It depends on what they're what they're trying to achieve. Um, there's a lot of funding, and most most of them are out of California. They're out of kind of Silicon Valley. They're a tech company. Yeah. Um, they're they usually some of them have people here locally. They've hired you know they have a couple of people locally. Um, I've seen one that doesn't look like they have anybody locally, so they just kind of partner with a realtor somewhere mm. uh, that's just going to resell the home for them. Yep. And so, um, so they're typically they're they're an interesting bunch, and we'll see where it goes. What they seem to be doing is trying to build, um, get more information. So there's a, there's definitely a, more of an information mm-hmm. piece. So they're buying houses, but they're not buying a ton of houses. Mm-hmm. And so what I think they're doing, what it seems like they're doing, is is kind of building data points. So each house they buy, they get more information about it, right. um, and then more information about who buys it and then how they sell it. And sometimes they'll sell in house, and you can actually go in to these houses without with just a smartphone, and you can access the home. Wow. And it's all um, virtual in a sense. It's all virtual. Yeah, it's kind right. of like they're so kind of headed kind for. Of creepy, it? Yeah. <laughs> so on an empty house that's not lived in it's fine uh and so it's that's an interesting group because they're they're kind of going after yeah they're kind of going after the realtors is what they're really doing and so um that one um they're not really part of our our market as much yeah uh because they really um and the stuff i've seen it doesn't look like they're really making any money um but what they are doing is generating a lot of leads so a lot of them are, are advertising, you know, just call us or, or go online and you can type in your information. We'll send you an offer without oh, anybody wow. coming in your house. Anybody that sends you an offer wow. without coming in your house doesn't yeah. know what your house is worth. Wow. There's no way to do it. That's impossible. Yeah. We've been doing this a long yeah. time. I'm around a, pe- a lot of people that do this. Yeah. There's no way you can tell what a house is worth without going in a house. Yeah, that's how – how do they figure out the value of this house? Without they they the can give you an or? average. Okay. But at the end of the day, yeah. from my understanding, is a lot of these offers don't really hold up. Yeah. So if you sign the offer and say, yes, I'm going to do this, then they'll say, okay, now we're going to do an inspection, which is when the first – real estate expert comes through the house yeah. or what or whoever they might have i'm not sure i think it's somebody with a real estate background for sure mm-hmm. um an inspector that kind of thing and so and then they'll come through the house and a lot of times what it looks like is then they get the real to the real offer mm-hmm. so maybe if your house is perfect and, and in great shape maybe that holds up but if there's some repairs you made yeah. well then it starts going down and they'll have a lot of parameters because they're buying based on kind of a uh Kind of a formula. Okay. Um, again, it, they're kind of made, again. It's a tech company, so to it's all data, right? Yeah. They're they're like figuring it out. It's kind of like uh, AI technology yeah. that they're trying to achieve with this. And so as they build this, then they'll be able. They're hoping to be able to have this learn how to price houses, so they can have a virtual so realtor. They're wow. taking the human value out of it, yeah. basically, the yeah. personal Absolutely. touch. And I'm sure. I mean, this might be a topic for another time, but that's really interesting. On on going that route as far as, you know, no longer do you have a realtor come in or do you have an investor come in? It's, mm-hmm. you know, you send me something online and we'll send you something back. And then if you want to buy, if you're looking for a house, it's all done online. I mean, yeah, it's just, like, it's, yeah, it's a I mean, different it, way it to go about it. Right it's going to work yeah. better probably yeah. with the younger crowd, which is definitely what they're, if you look sure, at how they yeah, advertise, sure. that's what they're going yeah. for sure. is those younger millennials that yeah. may want, you know, be afraid to talk to people because they have never talked to somebody yeah. on the phone before. Yeah. Well, I feel know? like it's more, I, I feel like like buying a house is because I'm a millennial, but I feel like if I'm buying something, especially if I'm buying something expensive, there is a personal attachment to emotional, Absolutely. I guess you could say. I mean, yeah. I find, I mean, most of the things that I'm going to spend a lot of money on, and I like spending money on bikes yes. and motorcycles, you know. <laughs> yes. uh, but uh, if I'm going to do it, there's got to be an emotional attachment for, to me. So for me, dealing with somebody else you, you can build that emotional attachment mm-hmm. you know it tells a story in itself but if i'm just online scrolling through Clicking stuff through yeah it's online. like if i'm not gonna buy a car online because i don't i've never tested yeah. it. i don't i don't know what it's like exactly. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's the part that as a, as a realtor and having been with a lot of people the one thing you will find is that people everybody kind of thinks they buy and sell you know they're thinking this is an investment and all that which it is and that absolutely is but 
that's actually why you do this. But at the end of the day, the why one property is chosen versus another one is entirely based on emotion, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of emotion mm-hmm. looking at a computer screen. You're not going to get that feel. Yeah. You're not going to walk in and feel that squeaky cork floorboard and actually find it charming or right. not charming. Right, right, right. You know, it, you're not going right. to see the detail in the doors and woodwork or how the kitchen is laid out. You're not going to see all the emotion that goes into there, what your future family might look like in there. Sure. You know, who's going to be there, how many family reunions are you going to have there how many christmases are you going to have there like that's all emotion that's all attachments and i know it's just a structure yeah but that's how everybody works yeah and i do the same thing i'm an investor but when i buy my house you know what it's all out the window i'm just doing what i like you know and that's all it is so let me ask you this because there's obviously people and we see you know signs and billboards out there commercials for people that have these guaranteed offers well, I mean, is that... Well, it's a guaranteed yeah, offer. Yeah, is that similar to like a wholesaler? Or yeah, that's a, or it's or a good question yeah. because I think is sometimes... legit? Well, or? that's... Yeah, it is legit. I mean, right. they're not out there scamming anybody, you <laughs> know? I don't, yeah. I don't know of anybody in the Twin Cities that's just, uh, you know, just scamming everybody, <laughs> stuff like yeah, that. Right. I don't think that exists yeah. all that much, but you do want to be... Ca- you got to yeah. know, but there's some misinformation for sure. sure. And you got to make sure you know what you're getting so you're not surprised at the end. And that's where people feel cheated or scammed yep. is because there's a surprise at the end and what's be happening is generally fairly legal mm-hmm. in, in most of these but a lot sometimes we're not seeing everybody be as open and upfront about it sure. and that's where we start to see the problems devil's so, in the details yeah definitely yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> it, but it can be a little misleading especially yeah. when you're looking at advertising because advertising is always going to be mm-hmm. the, you know it's presented in the best possible light nobody's yeah. going to ca- say and say hey we're a little sketchy but you should work <laughs> with us anyway right, right. like nobody's calling yeah. that commercial right sure. so they're always going to call yeah. You know, they're going to yeah. take what what's best about them or what they think is best about them or what they think you want, and they're going to say that to you, so then you call them. Sure. So that's, you know, right. you got to be careful when you're looking at advertising. Don't You know, you don't want to believe everything. Yeah. So a guaranteed offer program is always done by, is typically done by realtors, and it looks like they're a purchaser, right? It mm-hmm. looks like, hey, we'll, we'll um, like, I don't know, they're, it, they work differently, but usually it's, they'll say, we'll list your house, but if you just want to sell it, we'll just buy it. Yeah. And so... Um, but I don't know of any real realtors in the, in the Twin Cities that actually are buying any properties. Right. Um, right. Typically, I mean, it's a very different thing to buy a property and then make it make it make money and actually be able to build a company around yeah. that. It's a very different skill set than being a realtor, sure. which you're just listing and, and, and you know, just making that, making sure that all the details are done, your house is dressed up, ready for the market, um, and that kind of thing. So. Um, so a lot of times what the guaranteed offer program is, is it's going to be like, we can list your property for 270,000, um, or we can buy it for 220, you know, or something like that. Right. And so there's a $50,000 thing. And so, um, and we will buy it if it doesn't sell or you can, or you can list it for a while and then we'll buy it if you don't want to continue. But what they do is they build in price drops in there. So it makes it easier as a realtor. And I listed a lot of properties and the biggest problem is a lot of times people are looking at their house and thinking it's worth more than it really is. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like my stuff is always worth more than your stuff. Absolutely. I don't care what it yours looks yeah, like. Yeah. Mine's yeah. worth more yeah. because it's mine, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how everybody works. It's human nature. Yeah. And so so realtors are always trying to find a gimmick to make people want to reduce their price mm-hmm. to be more effective on the market. Because yeah. otherwise your house might sit on the market and the market days are bad. If it's been sitting on the market for a while, people think there's something wrong with it. Yeah. And so and then you get all these showings, everybody walking through your house, and nobody's putting anything on. You just keep getting feedback, says, eh, it's not the right house for me, I don't like it, or they get nitpicky. Yeah. They're always thinking something's wrong. So, mm-hmm. so what realtors like to do, so these guaranteed offer programs are great for realtors because they are able to then say that we'll buy, here's our, here's our structure for um, selling your house. We're going to list it for 270 and we're going to go for three weeks or a certain number of showings. Then we're going to drop it $10,000 and then we're going to sell it for 260 and we're going to list it for a certain number of showings or a certain mm-hmm. number of weeks and then we're going to drop it to 250 And mm-hmm. if it hasn't sold by then, then we might look at, hey, we, you can just sell it to us for 200 because or 220 mm-hmm. right? Because uh, you're going to pay, you know, by the time you get done paying all the realtor fees and stuff like that, that's 20 grand already out yeah. of your pocket, 25. Yeah. Oh, right. And so by the time yeah. you get to 250 and 220 that's almost the same money in your pocket. Right. So by the time you get down to there, you might as well just sell it to the 220. Now, here's the thing is the realtor is not actually buying it. So if you actually get to that point and you are going to do Another that, company. you have, they're usually a front sort of, not like a front like the mob, but sure. they're a front, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> but they have another backer back there that's, that's, uh, 
like some of these i buyers are actually the backer for a number of the guaranteed offer programs in the oh, all right. and then twin cities that i'm aware of yeah. and so they so some of the major realtor or brokerages are offering oh guaranteed offer it's all over right we've all seen billboards yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's the person behind the group behind that is actually that group is never buying a house so the per- group behind that is just one of the i buyers all right who is then yeah. but then you have to start with their process oh. so if you get to that point right it's not just like oop done yeah. you know yeah. it's like well okay now <laughs> Now we go online, put this stuff in, you know, it, it's going to work a little differently. Yeah, so yeah. just make sure you ask a lot of questions if you're going there out. Sure. Um, and so, and know you're not, that the realtor that usually is doing this is probably not a professional home buyer. Mm-hmm. Um, they're probably not going to be able to price properly for the first time and they're going to have it inspected and then they're going to might need to make an adjustment because they may not have saw all the details they need to see sure. or they may not have properly evaluated yeah. the repairs they might want to make, all that stuff. Yeah. So I guess now... Tell me what, why would someone want to go to Homestead Road over any of these other ones? Well, I guess here's your here's your business. Spot yeah, right I know, here. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah here's where uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we're the yeah, coolest yeah. group. Of the, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, uh, that's yeah, number yeah. one. There you, go. you know, uh, no, I mean uh, we've done it a lot. We've we're big in the market. Um, we've grown in a market that you see people sort of grow, but they kind of hit a cap. Sure. And we've been able to outpace that because we provide an experience. We are. The field of joy is not is not just a tagline we put on billboards and stuff like that or on our mugs. Um, this is it's a it's a lifestyle and it is it's how we operate. We have a field of joy experience that is very important that we follow that all the way through. So for one of the things we always look at is how can we provide value back to the clients because yeah. there's mm-hmm. we can't buy every house. We're gonna buy some houses. We're not gonna buy them all. They're not all the right fit because they have to fit for us, but they have to fit for the client too. Sure. Like I can buy any house as long as I buy it super cheap, right? Yeah. But obviously, who wants you know? That's nobody's gonna sell to us. Yeah, ever. exactly. We be buying three houses a year, yeah. you know. And so, if you want to buy a lot of houses, you have to provide a very competitive offer, and you have to be able to do that for people. But at the same time, you have to give them something for the, for the some value. Sure. So everybody needs some value, and so some of that value is just how we treat people. Some of it is how we will walk you the simplicity of it, right? You can just come in and that's it. You just give us the keys. It's that simple. Um, we'll handle all the details for you. Um, there's never any issues as far as um, title work and stuff like that. If stuff comes up, we can help you out. If there's some issue with a lot of properties we buy, you know, maybe there's somebody that's passed away. That happens sometimes. Um, there's sometimes there's divorces. There's, there's some other things going on where title is a little more complicated. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we can solve that for everybody the best we can. Usually as a a seller, if you have that issue, the title company is going to call you and say, "Hey, here's here's all the problems. Here's what we, you know, we need." And so instead, what happens with us is the title company will be in contact with all of us, and as we find that whoever is your acquisition manager mm-hmm. um, is going to help you through that process. Yeah. Yeah, and say, hey, what's going on? What what can we do for you? You know, what do you need? Or explain better what you actually need. Yeah. You know, sometimes somebody calling you say, hey, you need an affidavit for something. And you're like, well, I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, and so, but we do. And so we're able to help you out that way. All right, cool. Well, I think that's it for today's podcast. I want to thank David O'Neill and Steve Wilson for taking the time to meet with us today and talk about different ways of selling your house and different companies to utilize. We also want to thank... You all you Homestead Roadies for watching and listening. And again, Homestead Road wants you to feel the joy of selling your home as is.